We're joined today by uh, Jeffrey Eisenach, who's the chairman and managing partner at Empiris. We saying that correct? Yep. Make sure you get your firm. Empiris it is. Uh, well, we thank you for joining joining us today. Um, you just wrapped up a panel um, put on by the Progress and Freedom Foundation titled Broadband Competition, Is the Glass Half Empty or Half Full? So we just asked to, to start, which one is it? Well, if you look at, uh, people are fond of making international comparisons about broadband, and if you look at the international comparisons, the U.S. has, without any question, the most competitive, or at, at a minimum, one of the most competitive broadband markets in the world. Uh, we're blessed by having two uh, virtually ubiquitous infrastructures, the telco infrastructure and the cable infrastructure. Uh, that means over 80 percent of Americans have a choice between at least two well-known broadband providers. And we're also leading the world, and even the Europeans admit this, in the deployment of next-generation wireless broadband infrastructures, 3G, essentially ubiquitously deployed today, and 4G being rolled out very quickly already by Clearwire, uh, LTE technologies coming from Verizon and AT&T within the next 12 to 18 months. So we're, we're just swimming in a sea of broadband competition, and one of the points that was made here today is whether we're really moving to the point of, of having too many <laughs> broadband networks more than the market can support, and I disagree with that. I think the market is growing, that the value of these services is so great that people are happy to pay what it takes to have choices. Uh, so. Uh, so I think we're moving in a very healthy direction, but uh, competition is the, the word of the day in broadband. Right. So what do you say to, to those that um, hypothesize that a, a duopoly um, is, is impairing the broadband marketplace, not allowing us to innovate and get to where other countries are? Um, how do you respond to, to those accusations, and, and are those rooted in fact? Well, uh, the uh, you know the name of my firm, Empiris, is uh, a shortened form of empirical analysis, and that, that's what we try to do. And I think if you look at the facts in the broadband market, and, and really in a way, it's almost uh, you you can look at them at a macro level, but if you look at them at a micro level of what's happening in market after market after market, FIO centers a market uh, offering 50 to uh, 20 to 50 megabits uh, down down downstream and 5 to 10 megabits upstream. Uh, and the cable companies instantly react to that, first with price cuts, uh, with boost programs to try to be able to advertise higher speeds, and then by deploying DOCSIS 3. Uh, Verizon's response is then to start beginning the process of going to 100 megabits and even testing now 400 megabit services. So what you see, just as you look at market entry taking place in market after market, you see these two firms you know, really at each other's throats. Uh, and you know, anybody who has been around, <laughs> either the cable companies or the telephone companies, at Federal Communications Commission or State Regulatory Commissions knows that these are you know, two sets of companies that are competing very hard in uh, every possible uh, every possible environment, the market, but also, frankly, in front of regulatory commissions. Um, Jeff, finally, uh, net neutrality, um, I guess you could say that that debate has kind of popped up in the last few weeks again with some, with some articles and other commentary. Um, probably no coincidence that that's happening at a time when the FCC is looking at a, developing a national broadband strategy. Um, where does the net neutrality debate or internet regulation, you know, fit into a competitive broadband market, and is it something that you would find um, to be dangerous? Well, the, the concern, I think, with net neutrality regulation is that uh, if you really go to the point where you're saying to each competitor in the market, you can't discriminate, you can't uh, have exclusive offers, there's nothing you can do that would distinguish you or differentiate you. Uh, from your competitors. So what, what you end up with is a Sprint being just like an AT&T, being just like a Verizon Wireless, being just like cable, being just like Fios. Uh, and really it's the di product differentiation that first of all makes competition work in these markets, but also is fulfilling different kinds of consumer demands. We're not all alike in terms of what we want from our broadband services. Some of us are going to be very happy with a mobile wireless uh, data service. Uh, we won't have a wireline broadband service. That's not a failure. Some of us want a bundled content. If I subscribe to Fios, I understand I can get ESPN 360 content from uh, uh, be able to watch uh, t television or, or uh, be able to watch uh, uh, sporting events on, online. Uh, so that kind of differentiation is really is what, what and diversity is really what makes the market work and what satisfies consumers. It, it gives consumers choice. And I think the irony really in the net neutrality debate is that the, the net neutrality folks have wrapped themselves in the, the notion of choice that only by having net neutrality regulation are we going to have choice. It's just the opposite. Uh, if we impose net neutrality regulation, we will destroy choice. Uh, and, uh, and that's, I think, what, uh, what people ought to be concerned about. Okay. Well, Jeff, we appreciate your time uh, on what's a, a very important commentary. Thank you. Thank you.